Hi there, Steve Coffin here again um, with my new lighting, which I hope is better. Um, I'm going to talk about something that I consider very, very important in language learning, and that's feeling good. Okay. Um, I think we all are aware that if we if we do something well, if we have an achievement, or if if something happy happens to us, uh, it could be as as simple as as uh, our favorite sports team wins a game or um, you know I play old-timers hockey I scored a nice goal uh, silly things but you've got a, a, a livelier step when you're walking you feel better about things and um, you know language learning is something that's so dependent on the learner the learners attitude again I repeat you know that it's it's the learners attitude number one the time you spend with the language and your ability to notice. Well, not only is the attitude itself important, but it influences how much time you're going to spend with the language. I mean, if you're motivated, you'll spend more time. If you're motivated, you're going to notice more things. So that attitude is such an important factor. And I think this is sometimes neglected. Um, you know, uh, what happens in class? Uh, the teacher has a a curriculum, a program that you have to follow, that certain things are taught, you're tested on them, and you may not do well on those things because very often the things that are taught take a while to click in. It takes, in fact, a lot of exposure to the language before certain grammatical aspects start to become clear to you, before they start to make sense, let alone before you can actually start reproducing them. So, and if you do poorly on the test, then of course that's that's discouraging and when you're discouraged then you lose your motivation and so so you know I was thinking of this for example with regard to you know I put up videos uh, at YouTube in different languages Spanish uh, Russian you name it and invariably there is someone who comes along and criticizes me uh, there was just someone on Russian who came along and said your pronunciation is terrible and your cases are awful and it's pretty rough and stuff like that which is probably true depending on what your standard is compared to a native speaker I'm all of those things and worse however compared to someone who can't speak the language at all which is where I started from five years ago uh, and similarly with my Czech which is worse than my Russian which I started let's say uh, you know a year and a half ago now I'm someone who understands the radio can read books I have a sense of things Czech, things Russian, I listen to their uh, arguments on Echo Moskvi, I follow the, the events in Czech Republic, the uh, direct election of their president and uh, whatever's going on, I can follow it in Czech. Wow! So, you know, rather than having a teacher tell me that my cases are wrong uh, or some guy gratuitously on YouTube telling me that my cases are wrong or that my pronunciation is not very good, uh, I've, I've got to and we as learners have to condition ourselves to give ourselves credit for what we what we have achieved uh, I had a discussion in Czech the other day and I stumbled and bumbled but that doesn't discourage me because of all the ways in which I am able to enjoy the Czech language uh, so I focus on what I have achieved Wow look I can pick up a book I can read it I can make sense I can participate in things Czech I can discuss the, uh, the Czech uh, presidential election via Skype with a person in the Czech Republic in Prague. Wow! So, it's very important that we find ways to give ourselves credit so that we have a sense of achievement because that sense of achievement is, is very encouraging for us and it keeps us going. And, you know, if you're at school, for example, if the, uh, say, French uh, program is discouraging because you're you're getting poor marks or whatever, this carries over into other subjects. In other words, any success that we feel in our language learning makes us more positive in other areas of endeavor. So if we are satisfied with what we have achieved in our, say, independent learning of a language, that makes us better at other things that we do. So what I'm getting at in all of this is that very often traditional language learning focuses on testing you, focuses on on trying to make sure that what was taught to you that you have in fact learned it and I think that's largely counterproductive obviously we need testing in maths or in 
in uh, you know engineering or, or you know like a brain surgeon or, or people like that that have to meet certain standards but what are we looking for in in language acquisition except for a small minority of people who are going to be translators or interpreters at the UN or something most people just want to communicate and so it's important to bear in mind that that these are the goals the person who wants to work towards that ultimate goal of sounding like a native which i don't think is feasible for 99 percent of people uh, or speaking correctly and stuff it's good and those are laudable goals and we need to have those goals but we need to give ourselves credit we need to feel comfortable confident feel good about our learning and teachers should make that their number one goal is to make the learner feel good about his or her learning so that they have a positive attitude feel confident put in the time, enjoy it, try to make the language their own, all those things. So it's just, um, you know, I had a conversation today with someone. I was explaining Link to them. This was a potential corporate customer for Link. And they sort of said, well, you know, what is the pedagogical, you know, basis for what you do and, and uh, with credentials and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah we're a group of people we help each other uh, native speakers helping others learn the language of that native speaker uh, lots of interesting content people enjoy what they do they put in the time they learn that's the pedagogical basis it's not no well you know she, she this person said you have to have the, uh, the you have to teach the basic structures it has to be the structured that structured and I, as I've said many times, I find it very difficult to learn the basic structures. I don't think the basic structures just slot into place like that. I think eventually over time with enough exposure, you get a better and better sense of how the language works. But you don't just go out there and acquire the basic structures. I don't think it works that way. Rather, uh, what happens in our schools is a lot of people are discouraged by the way languages are taught and they never continue. They never continue. Once they leave school, they don't bother with it. And so that's a great failing. So, just to summarize again, I think language instruction should focus on the issue of making the learner feel good about learning that language, wanting to learn that language, uh, feeling good about their achievements, rather than pointing out through tests or through other critical comments where the learner isn't quite up to somebody else's standard. So, I hope that makes sense. Thanks, thanks for listening. Bye for now.